Good evening, everyone. At this time, at 7.03, I would like to call the Wilmington Board of Selectmen meeting of Monday, April 27, 2015, to order. All members are present, and at this time, I would kindly ask that we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would ask if Selectman Newhouse could please lead us in that effort. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before getting into the official agenda, I'd like to once again just acknowledge that all board members as well as the town manager and uh, Beverly are wearing an article of clothing that is blue in honor and support of Autism Awareness Month, uh, which is for the month of April. So I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for participating once again, and um, we will move into the full agenda at this time. So I'll start with the transmitting of the Treasury Warrants 43, 43A, 44, and 44A. Do I have a motion. So moved. Second. Which has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of the minutes uh, for January 12, 2015, January 26, 2015, February 2nd, 2015, February 9th, 2015, and March 9th, 2015. If it's the board's pleasure, I'd like to take those minutes up together unless anyone has a reason why uh, they can't vote on a specific I move to approve uh, all of the minutes as presented uh, and as summarized by the chair. Thank you. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Yes. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to our first appointment. How did running? Did you take up <coughs> the uh, treasury warrants? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no problem. Um, moving into our first appointment, running a few minutes behind, we do apologize uh, with Scott C. Grant, Chairman of the Fourth of July Committee, with reference to a request to use the town common for the annual Fourth of July festivities. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, members of the board. We're back. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, this year's celebration is planned to be from Tuesday, June 30th through Saturday the 4th. Tuesday the 30th will be on the town common with dinner, concert, our traditional events. And that evening we'll have the ladies two mile walk, road race, wiffle ball, horseshoes and other activities for families and kids. And then on Wednesday, July 1st, we'll shift over to the Shriners where we'll be uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday being the 4th. Each of those nights um, and Saturday afternoon, we will have community groups with our food court, community groups serving meals, we'll have fiesta shows, and we'll have dinner each night along with concert each night. The fireworks will be on Saturday, July 4th itself. Saturday morning, we will have our, I think, 21st annual family day on the town common. So officially, our request for the town common is for Tuesday the 30th and the morning of Saturday the 4th. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank all of the, the many nonprofit Wilmington-based organizations that, that help make this event what it is. And particularly this year, once again, the Shriners membership and Ernie Pearlstein, Sheila Bissett, and Kevin Lewis from the Shriners who really make us feel at home and, and open the Shriners to the, to the community. I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts of many town department heads and employees who without them that this event wouldn't happen. And particularly this year, addressing many, many issues, concerns, and some adjustments from last year, Mike Bagonis, who um, walked in after I did. So uh, since he's here, I'll take the opportunity. He's put, a, he's put a lot of time into planning for this year's event. Uh, so once again, for the board, our formal request is for use of the common and the parking lot next to the 4th of July building on Tuesday, June 30th, and Saturday, July 4th. Thank you. Any questions or comments from anyone on the board? Anyone? Okay. Just want to say before we take the vote, thank you very much for everything that you do, Scott, you and your entire committee, and certainly want to echo your comments regarding town personnel, specifically the chief and obviously the fire department, and just the total town uh, response and effort to make this happen. So. We certainly enjoy the benefits of your hard work that goes on all 12 months of the year. Uh, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to publicly acknowledge you as well. Thank you. It's our pleasure. So at this time, would anyone like to make a motion to grant the request as itemized by Mr. Grant? So moved. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? 
unanimous. Thank you. And if, if I may go off agenda for a couple of moments, I'd like to personally thank the board and the town employees for recognizing Autism Awareness Month. Indeed. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Okay, moving on to our next appointment. We're running a little bit early now, so we will move right to our 710, which is with Joseph Martinello and, and Julie Roseo, with reference to the 2015 Wilmington Relay for Life in Paint the Town Purple campaign. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Was, so. yeah. Thank you uh, for having us back again. Yeah. Um, yes. This is our seventh year back visiting you guys. It's hard to believe it's been seven years. Um, so we started this endeavor seven years ago, um, partnering with the American Cancer Society to bring awareness to um, uh, what the resources that are available through the American Cancer Society are, the research that the American Cancer Society does, and offer an event for the community to help support this nonprofit, but also bring our community together. Um, it's a fairly powerful event uh, for those of you that have never been in the past, um, even if you're not interested in supporting from a fundraising perspective, I suggest you come down to the event. It, it's really p impactful for anyone who has been impacted by cancer or for anyone who has a family member or a friend that's been impacted by cancer. Um, it truly is an uplifting event. Um, we start the event, it's a, I'll give a little overview of it um, for those who might not be familiar with it. It's a 12 hour event. It will start at 5.30 in the evening and it will go to 5.30 um, in the morning. And the reason it's an overnight event is it mirrors a cancer patient's journey through their treatment. They don't get a break. They don't get the nights off. And that's the original uh, foundation that the Relay for Life event that the American Cancer Society created was built upon. Um, we keep that in Wilmington. Um, those who have participated in the past truly enjoy that overnight component and the camaraderie um, the event itself is uh, teams formed together, whether it be family, friends, fraternal organizations, and the request is that one team member is walking on the track at all times. And for that 12 hours, except for ceremonies, you've got somebody on your team walking at all times. Um, to in enhance the experience, we have theme laps where people wear made crazy hats, they may wear different um, outfits to just keep people motivated uh, for that long journey of the 12 hours. As I mentioned, we do have ceremonies. So we have three marquee, uh, four um, marquee ceremonies. We kick off the event at 5.30 with our opening ceremony, greeting everyone and thanking everyone, our sponsors, our participants, um, and those who are there just to um, enjoy the event that day. And we then hear from typically a survivor, and a survivor will speak about their story. Um, after that, we invite all of our survivors onto the track and they start the event. They kick it off. We're there for them. So they take that first lap together. And it's very impactful. Um, the participants who are present line the um, track area and they cheer them along um, that first lap. So it's a really powerful thing to see um, community coming together. When we get into the evening hours around 9 o'clock, we have a ceremony called the Luminaria Ceremony. And that ceremony you have um, glow sticks and bags that are illuminating the track. And those are memorials or in honor of somebody um, battling cancer. So in many cases though, it's memorials. And people will take an opportunity to draw on the luminaria bag in honor of somebody, in memory of somebody. Or again, if somebody's um, battling cancer or su uh, a survivor of cancer as well. <coughs> That, that alone, we, we don't bring the lights up until after that ceremony is over. That's a really impactful and poignant point in the mo moment um, of the event. It gives people an opportunity to reflect. Um, and that's, part of, that's one ceremony that many people do not want to miss. And I would highly recommend if you do come for a portion of it, at least stay through that portion of the event. And then after that, we raise the music up a little bit more, and we get upbeat, and we keep people energized throughout the re remainder of the event. New this year, we're launching a spirit of relay ceremony at 11 o'clock. Some people can't endure the entire overnight, and we want to give them an opportunity to feel comfortable leaving at that 11 o'clock time frame. So we're going to take the opportunity to thank everybody, and we want to know to uh, we want to give recognition to those who are giving back in the relay spirit. So it could be giving back of time, it could be a sponsor, it could be a volunteer, 
it doesn't need to be tied to financial. Even tonight, um, you know, some people look at this fundraising as it's just purely fundraising. We're running an event right now. So there's an event happening in Wilmington right now for survivors. We've got 30 survivors and there's a catered dinner going on right now. And that's on behalf of the Relay for Life. Um, and then going back to the event, we end the event at five o'clock in the morning. We're gonna have a closing breakfast this year instead of a formal ceremony. And we're going to have pastries um, donated by Panera. So a lot of sponsors that return every year. So Two Cousins CJ, um, WCTV is gonna be um, doing a segment on us. Bertucci's offers pizza up at 11 o'clock for the participants in the overnight. Uh, we get coffee from Duncan's. Uh, we get um, Starbucks, we get Karma Wellness Water. So we have a lot of stuff that's available for people. There's a lot of entertainment during the day itself as well. So it's a great event. Um, we have 112 participants registered so far. We have $11,000 raised. Doesn't include a $20,000 sponsorship we've been getting for two years now from Majero Corporation. And we've gotten 11, um, a $1,000 sponsorship from Leahy. So, um, it's been a great event in the community. We've raised over $810,000 over the last seven years, um, and the mo momentum uh, continues on. Um, so like Joe said, some of it's not all about the fundraising. It really is about, you know, what that fundraising actually helps to do besides bring a community, community together and also, you know, honor and remember our cancer survivors. Some of the programs and services that we actually offer um, to anyone, we have support groups that are online and in person. Um, we have a road to recovery program, um, which provides rides to and from treatment um, when rides can't otherwise be provided by family and friends. Um, we actually had someone at a recent meeting come who is a road to recovery driver come to share her experience. She's a volunteer driver. She drives about once every week she'll drive down but she does it um, and really enjoys it so we had her come to a meeting just to kind of share her experience and really share you know what her volunteering in that road to recovery process has actually helped she's actually built some friendships with some of the survivors that she's driven um, we have free lodging for patients um, if they're more than 40 miles from home we have hope lodges um, so they are a place that survivors and a caregiver can go and stay that they're almost like hotels. They have their own rooms. Um, there's a community kitchen, um, community laundry, but it's a place that they can go um, for free, that they don't have to worry about getting a hotel room for you know six months if they're from out of town and they have their treatments in Boston. It helps to take a load off of them in that way. We also have a Look Good Feel Better program, which helps women um, counteract the um, effects of chemo and radiation. So they go through about a 45 minute class with a licensed cosmetologist that helps them um, apply makeup to make themselves feel better on the outside. Um, and that's all donated time and the products that the women receive are also donated from um, the cosmetology um, manufacturers, um, which is a really wonderful um, opportunity for them. I'm missing. Nope. Okay. Those are <laughs> um, so two of the things that we did want to um, discuss and ask the board's approval for um, was our Paint the Town Purple campaign. Um, so we were hoping that we could turn the um, common lights purple, similar to how they are right now for Autism Awareness Month for the month of May. Um, May also ties into Skin Cancer Awareness Month, um, especially with the Memorial Day. Um, the American Cancer Society that Tuesday before typically has a no Friday campaign um, which just reminds people to put sunscreen on because that's typically the first time that you will burn if you are going on vacation um, so being able to kind of bring some awareness to um, Relay for Life but also the American Cancer Society as well during the month of May um, would be extremely helpful especially with the event coming the following month um, the second um, thing that we were hoping um, was for some signage to be able to provide signage day of the event to the actual location. Um, so putting directional signs at 129 and 38 Broncos, um, 129 and Shawshine Ave, 
Shashin Avon Carter, 62 in Butwell, and then Butwell to the school itself, just to direct people to actually where the event is that day. Yeah, just on a final note, um, I know I'll get this question, so I'm going to answer it now. <laughs> the date, June 19th, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, June 19th to June 20th. Uh, the time, as I indicated, 5.30 p.m. to 5.30 a.m where people can get information, oh, the location, the Wilmington Middle School, um, the, uh, the theme, lights, camera, relay this year. So we're asking mm -hmm. our uh, team members and participants to embody that with their campsites and be creative. So uh, look for that this year. And uh, location to get more information, uh, WilmingtonRFL.com. So, WilmingtonRFL.com will redirect you to the American Cancer Society location. Most importantly, if, if aside from the event itself, if you have any questions related to um, cancer and you need to get answers, the ACS has an um, 800 number. It's 800-227-2345, 24 hours a day. They'll help guide you, and that's important. That's what part of this fundraising is for, it's to support these resources. So just want to make sure anyone on the phone um, uh, that didn't have that information has that information. Um, and thank you to the town. You've yes. been hugely supportive of this event. I hear from the American Cancer Society regularly the difference between Wilmington and other communities. And it's, it's monumental. And I'm involved in other nonprofits as well, and the support that this town throws behind nonprofits is amazing. So thank you to all depar de um, town <laughs> departments, sorry, a little tongue tied right now, all town departments, uh, police, fire, um, all the municipals. It's, it's just absolutely amazing, and I'm very proud to be um, a part of this town and have grown up here. So. With that, I promised my daughter I would say hi to her. So, <laughs> hi, Olivia. <laughs> I have to do that one or I'm going to get in trouble later tonight. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. I got to tell you. Um, well, thank you very much for such a, a detailed explanation. I, I've participated in the event and have been a part of it, and I definitely know um, how much work and effort you put into it as a committee and as a group and how supportive uh, the American Cancer Society has been in helping Wilmington be successful. So thank you for all that you're doing uh, for the families and the, the patients that benefit from what you do. I'm sure it means the world to them um, as they're in the midst of the battle of a lifetime. So uh, thank you for continuing on seven years and in, in the dollar amount that you uh, indicated certainly doesn't even probably show the true picture. It's more of the community and the gathering together and it's such an emotional uh, day. So. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to the board to um, offer their comments, and then I know that you had some specific requests, and I would be interested in hearing from the manager as to um, you know what preliminarily he can convey to you as to whether or not we can accommodate some of those things, and um, and I'll leave it to the manager at that time. But I'll turn it to the board first. Uh, well said, Judy. Uh, it's it's amazing. To when you hear about things like this, the uh, the nonprofits that you said, and for a cause, what this town does, it it really does step up for so many different causes. And this is an amazing. I can't believe it's been seven years. Mm -hmm. How time flies, and and the um, financial support that you've been able to support some of the things that you mentioned, and um, you know, kudos to you and your committee and for continuing on. Thank you. I think it's been said, but I don't want to uh, pass on the opportunity just to uh, acknowledge that and to say thank you for the for the wonderful work. Very much appreciated. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Basically, said it all, and you know, all we can do is say thank you. I'm sure, you know, personally, and you know, can't just touch all our lives in one way or another. A friend or a family. I lost my mother, age 42, a young person. So, I want to applaud you and I want to thank you for everything you do because it's an outstanding organization. And you can see you folks from a distance. And I want to apologize for my attire. I was running late to the executive session. I didn't want to be too late. So once again, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Mr. McCoy said it. Um, I think every human being in some way, shape, or form has been touched or impacted by the scourge of cancer. And it's just, it, it's, you hear that, the C word, and you're like, oh, God, it's, you know, you're, you fear the worst always, um, and the eight hundred thousand dollars that you talked about—eight, eight, more than eight hundred over seven years—is 
uh, I think a remarkable achievement. I think oftentimes, well, I shouldn't, I think uh, that that money goes into research and it's tr we're looking for the cure and all that, but you helped me really sort of formulate the vision that it's improving pe th those that are suffering, improving their quality of life. So there's more than just research going on here. There's quality of life issues. Uh, and that's so admirable and, and so important, I know. Um, so thank you for, continu for continuing it. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from Jeff as well on some of the nuances of how we can accommodate the requests that you have. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to, to vote yes on that. But before I pass over here, I want to say congratulations to you for the efforts of the uh, Where One Wilmington race yesterday, right? Yeah. I didn't participate this year. I was a little, little wiped out from election season, but, um, but I saw the ongoings and I was uh, tracking it online and it uh, looks like it was a really successful event. So congratulations to you on that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you. This time I'm going to turn it over to you, Jeff, just to see if you uh, want to make any comments. Please. Sure. Uh, <coughs> well, we uh, have been working with uh, uh, Julie and uh, Joe for a number of months now. Uh, a number of the department heads have been involved this year as they have uh, in, the, in the past few years, um, uh, both uh, Chief McClellan and, and uh, Chief Bogonis, uh, Mike Woods, George Hooper, uh, primarily the uh, uh, folks from the town. And uh, as was done last year, uh, we believe we're able to accommodate uh, the requests in terms of the setup behind the middle school. Also in terms of the lighting, I did have a conversation with uh, Mike Woods, the Public Works Director, and he indicated that we could provide uh, the lenses. I guess the lighting on the trees is uh, apparently we're not able to obtain the uh, particular type of light for that, but we can certainly uh, get the lenses um, for the actual lights themselves. Uh, with regard to the signs, I don't anticipate a problem there either. I think we're, okay. we're good. Okay. Do we need a formal vote or just your indication should be sufficient? Are you looking for us to take any sort of formal action? I think a vote would be appropriate, yeah. Okay. So would anyone like to entertain a uh, motion to grant the requests as itemized by Mr. Martinello, inclusive of the lighting and the signage? Motion so made. And seconded. Okay. Which has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank Thanks you. again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, so moving on to our next appointment. Um, it is Board of Selectmen discussion with reference to the FY 2016 budget. I'm going to just reiterate to the board last meeting, um, I had mentioned that Selectman Newhouse had kindly asked that I put this on the agenda, and I did so. And if you recall, uh, Selectman Newhouse kindly asked for that to be tabled so that he could have more time to review some documentation and uh, has since asked that I put it back on the agenda for this meeting. So I'm going to turn it over to Selectman Newhouse now just to uh, make any comments that you would like, and we can take it from there. Yeah, I <clears throat> didn't want to, um, uh, to neglect to get it back on the agenda because we had brought it up. Uh, the the uh, questions that I had that largely centered around the centralization of the IT department and various uh, salaries, et cetera, and how the pieces would be moved around. Uh, the manager provided that information. I know he's um, uh, ready, willing, and able to explain it to anybody. Uh, I wasn't at the uh, the uh, finance committee hearing um, at the time that the manager went before the FinCom, but um, you know my questions have been answered um, uh, to my satisfaction. We'll move forward at uh, town meeting, I, I assume. So, um, you know, really nothing to follow up on other than I wanted to close the loop with uh, the board, especially since you had uh, taken the time to put it on the agenda last time. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. While we have it here as a discussion item, does anyone at the table uh, want to make any comments or ask any questions since it is on the agenda? Does everyone feel that we're ready to move forward with the remainder of the agenda and take up our needs at town meeting? All set? Okay. All right. Let's move on to our next uh, agenda item, which is discussion and assignment of motions for the annual town meeting. And I'll turn it over to the manager. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, a, uh, there's a memorandum that I issued to the board uh, that uh, just established a proposed um, order uh, or assignment of uh, of the various articles. Uh, if you would like, I can just go down through the list. Uh, 
identifying who is assigned to each and if there's any desire to change the order then uh, just let me know and we'll uh, make arrangements to do that as you know uh, the uh, actual motion book which will contain individual motions for those articles being presented by the board will be uh, prepared this week and will go out uh, on Friday uh, in advance of the meeting on Saturday uh, so with that uh, just starting uh, with Article 1, uh, which, which would be the motion uh, that the moderator dispense with the uh, reading of the warrant. Uh, uh, Mike uh, uh, Shampoo, uh, Selectman Shampoo. Uh, Article 2, uh, to hear any reports, uh, Selectman McCoy. Article 3 is the uh, transfer or uh, borrowing authorization uh, for any unpaid bills, uh, Selectman O'Connell. Article 4 is the authorization uh, for the treasurer collector to enter into banking agreements, uh, Selectman Samaglia. Uh, article uh, 5 uh, is the budget article. There will be a series of motions made there, and those will be taken up uh, as is custom by uh, John Doherty, uh, chair of the Finance Committee. Article 6A is to authorize the purchase of police cruisers, uh, Selectman Newhouse. 6B, to authorize the purchase of a dump truck with Sander, uh, Selectman uh, Shampoo. Uh, Article 6C, to authorize the purchase of a one-ton dump truck with Plow, uh, Selectman McCoy. Uh, 6D, to authorize the purchase of a one-ton pickup truck, Selectman O'Connell. Select, uh, Article 6E, to authorize the purchase of a school transport van, uh, Selectman Smaglia. Article 7, to authorize the purchase of a chiller unit at the Public Safety Building, uh, Selectman uh, Newhouse. Uh, Article 8, to authorize the purchase of computer hardware and software, uh, Selectman uh, Shampoo. Article 9, to authorize the purchase of a liquid de-icer tank, Selectman McCoy. Article 10, to authorize upgrades at the middle school, uh, Selectman O'Connell. Article 11, to purchase uh, foundations or foundations ELA program for the schools, Selectman Samaglia. Article 12, to authorize the purchase of math text adoption in K-5, to five, uh, Selectman Newhouse. Uh, Article 13, to authorize uh, drainage improvements for Mass Ave, Selectman Shampoo. Article 14, to authorize drainage improvements at Cunningham Street, Selectman McCoy. Article 15, to authorize the uh, engineering uh, of the DPW fuel tanks, Selectman O'Connell. Article 16, to authorize roof replacements at the Shasheen School, uh, Selectman Samaglia. Article 17, to authorize roof replacement at the Woburn Street School, Selectman Newhouse. Article 18, to authorize uh, miscellaneous facilities improvements, Selectman Shampoo. Article 19, to authorize the purchase uh, of uh, in, uh, Installation of a culvert at Butters Row Bridge, Selectman McCoy. Article 20 to authorize uh, reconstruction of the Shasheen parking lot, Selectman O'Connell. Article 21 to authorize the heating system at the Shasheen School, Selectman Smoglia. Uh, Article 22 to authorize the development of a facilities plan, uh, Selectman Newhouse. Article 23 to authorize funding of improvements to 9 Cross Street, Selectman O'Connell. Article 24, to authorize acceptance of the OPEB Trust Fund, uh, Selectman Shampoo. Article 25, to authorize an appropriation for deposit in the OPEB Trust Fund, uh, Selectman McCoy. Article 26, to authorize the transfer from OPEB Stabilization Fund uh, to the OPEB Trust Fund, uh, Selectman Smaglia. Article 27, to authorize a transfer to Capital Stabilization Fund, uh, Selectman uh, Newhouse, Article 28 to authorize a transfer uh, to Employee Retirement Benefits Fund, uh, Selectman Shampoo, Article 29 to authorize transfers from various accounts for 2015 budget, uh, Selectman McCoy, <coughs> Article 30 to authorize funds for Memorial and Veterans Day, Selectman Smaglia, Article 31 to authorize funds for the VFW lease, Selectman O'Connell, Article 32, to authorize funds for uh, the revolving accounts, Selectman Newhouse. Article 33, to authorize <coughs> funds for a public rink enterprise, uh, Selectman Shampoo. 
Article 34 to authorize uh, the demolition of the Whitfield School, Selectman Newhouse. Article 35 to authorize acceptance of Lieutenant Buck Drive, uh, Selectman McCoy. Article 36 to authorize disposition of the Butters Farm, Selectman O'Connell. Article 37 to amend the inhabitant bylaws regarding the sale of personal property, uh, Selectman Smoglia. Article 38 to amend the inhabitant bylaws regarding the naming of property, Selectman O'Connell. Article 39 to amend the inhabitant bylaws regarding secondhand dealers, uh, Selectman Newhouse. Article 40 to authorize changes to eligibility for tax deferrals, uh, Selectman Shampoo. Article 41 to authorize changes to income limits for tax exemptions, uh, Selectman McCoy. Article 42 to authorize changes to asset limits for tax exemptions, Selectman O'Connell. And then Article 43 to authorize acceptance of the senior tax program, Selectman Smoglia. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments from anyone? Hearing none, okay, moving on to communications, please. Uh, communications, uh, the first item uh, is a, a letter from the uh, Mass uh, DEP, uh, and I'll just, uh, it's a fairly brief letter, so I'll read it uh, directed to uh, Joseph Labeo uh, at the Public Works. The Department of Environmental Protection Drinking Water Program is pleased to extend its congratulations to the Wilmington Water Department for its outstanding performance in 2014. Your system uh, is the recipient of the 2015 Water Conservation Award in Public Water System Awards Program. Mass DEP recognizes the effort and dedication your system has evidenced in impl implementing exemplary water conservation practices during the 2014 calendar year, conserving our drinking water to ensure we have enough water for future generations and to minimize impacts to our water resource uh, resources is a major initiative we must all undertake. It is our belief that public water systems going above and beyond what is required should be recognized for their endeavors. Uh, I would like to invite you to the Public Water Systems Awards celebration uh, in order to receive your award. We hope your presence will encourage other systems to be more uh, aware of the importance of water conservation. Uh, Mass DEP encourages you to continue to carry, your, carry out your work in protecting uh, in supplying safe and fit water to your communities. I look forward to seeing you uh, at the awards ceremony at the Gloucester House in Gloucester, Mass. on May 5th. Uh, so that was uh, nice recognition. Congratulations uh, to, to the town on that. Uh, the next uh, item of correspondence is a memo that uh, I sent to the board uh, that outlines the steps being taken uh, to uh, begin the uh, publicity process, if you will, for the uh, change to automated trash and recycling collection. Uh, some of the things uh, that are included in this, uh, uh, with this packet is the uh, flyer, uh, or actually a poster, if you will, information poster uh, about some of the uh, key aspects of the automated collection process. Uh, this poster was displayed uh, this past Saturday uh, at the various election polling places along with the containers uh, that will be used. Uh, some of the high points, uh, the automated collection uh, is, uh, uh, will be beginning uh, July 1st. Uh, information uh, will be, uh, continue to be posted uh, and will be posted at the town meeting. Uh, information is also going to be made available uh, on uh, April 30th at the Senior Center at 1 p.m. There's going to be a program over there explaining uh, the uh, finer details of how the program will work. Also, information is going to be presented at the Welcome to Wilmington reception, uh, which is being held at the library uh, that evening, uh, the 30th of April from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, we're also uh, planning to uh, provide information both on the uh, bulletin board as well as a, a program through WCTV. Uh, there's a frequently asked questions uh, piece that is on the DPW's website uh, that hits a lot of the high points uh, about the program. Uh, each home will be receiving a postcard uh, in the mail in the next uh, several weeks, uh, within the next few weeks, that will describe again the program uh, and then they'll be followed up with a more detailed a booklet that will 
uh, talk about the various materials and, and what is uh, recyclable and what, what isn't. Uh, and then the bins are, uh, the uh, containers will be delivered uh, to the households. Uh, my understanding is at this point, at least the week prior to the beginning of the program. Jeff, I'm sorry. I think you said it, and I don't see it written. Is, will they be at town meeting next week as well? You'll yes. Have some, okay, thank you. Both the uh, uh, containers as well as uh, the information. Yep. Great. Comprehensive. Uh, there's a memorandum from me uh, with regard to a meeting that was held uh, last week with Kinder Morgan. Uh, representatives uh, John Gavin and Steve Keaty uh, uh, spoke to uh, several of the uh, departments that have been vo involved in this effort. And essentially they provided us with a, a map that uh, outlined both the original route that they were proposing, which if you recall uh, included some sensitive areas uh, in town, including a couple of the town's uh, drinking water supply well areas. Uh, their current plan uh, is to follow the uh, utility corridor, or as close as they can uh, get to it, um, the, uh, throughout the town of Wilmington. Uh, so uh, if they're um, able to do that, uh, it would uh, eliminate the concerns uh, with regard to uh, the proximity to the drinking water wells. It also uh, takes the property away, or takes the uh, route away from some vernal pool areas, which was another concern uh, that has been expressed. Um, you know, obviously, from from my perspective, um, you know, it, I, I just assume uh, that the route of the uh, pipeline um, goes somewhere other than Wilmington. But uh, if the pipeline is going to go through Wilmington, um, I think the th this is perhaps uh, at this point, anyways, appears to be certainly less uh, onerous and less impactful than the original route. Uh, the one area that remains to be a concern uh, is the their plan to go through Beneventos or, or under the uh, uh, the quarry operation. When you look looking at the map here, you'll note that it appears that the utility corridor that they'll follow is on the edge of the uh, quarry, but still uh, would uh, would go under the quarry, and, and they've indicated to us that their plan would be to literally uh, uh, run a uh, gas line underneath the quarry. We've asked again uh, for information uh, about where this has been done in other locations. Uh, they've indicated uh, that there is a location in Connecticut uh, and possibly in a location in uh, New Jersey where this kind of activity has been done in, in the one case, I guess, with an active quarry. The other instance, uh, the quarry was active, has since uh, uh, closed up. But we're, we're looking for that information and also doing our own research to uh, try to determine, you know, is this something that can literally be engineered to be safe or exactly what are the ramifications of that kind of a setup. So um, obviously we'll continue to monitor this. The uh, according to Mr. Keedy and Mr. Gavin, uh, their plan is to formally uh, reference this new uh, route in their fourth quarter uh, report, which will be part of the official filing with uh, FERC. Uh, so we will continue to attend the regional meetings. Our representatives from the town will uh, and, and just stay on this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, correspondence from Lou Semaglia, Director of uh, Veterans Services, and he uh, invites the board uh, to Memorial Day and Veterans Day services. I am sending this letter on behalf of the Department <coughs> of Veterans Services and the Memorial Day and Veterans Day Committee. Uh, we are requesting permission to have our annual Memorial Day parade and ceremony at the Wildwood Cemetery. The date of the parade this year is May 25th, 2015. The parade will start at the Market Basket parking lot at 10 a.m. Uh, thank you for the Board of Selectmen's consideration uh, with this matter. Uh, next is uh, correspondence from AA, the AARP 
uh, Foundation. Uh, this is uh, directed to my attention. Thanks to the Town Hall AARP tax program, more than 230 seniors were given free tax aid help from February 1st to April 15th. We are writing to thank you for the use of the Town Hall. Uh, we would also like to praise the members of your staff for their ha helpfulness and courtesy. Uh, each week we found the auditorium set up for us. The women in your office helped us uh, shred incorrect forms. Terry Marciello and Kristen Fogarty were invaluable in signing seniors up for each tax session and reminding them to come the day before their appointment. Uh, they show a level of dedication to the more frail elders uh, that is unsurpassed. For many of these seniors, it was an opportunity to meet their tax obligations. For others, the senior circuit breaker credit, $1,050, helped them pay for needed medicine, fuel, and heat. Uh, the relief and gratitude was evident. Again, thank you for making this space available. Seven volunteers gave over 250 hours to make this a great success. Together with your great town employees, we were able to uh, accomplish an amazing feat. Look forward to continuing this collaboration years to come. Uh, next is uh, a couple of memorandums from me to the board. The first being uh, with regard to appointments uh, and reappointments uh, for the board to consider at your meeting on May 11th. Uh, the first being uh, Board of Appeals, five-year term to expire uh, in 2020. Uh, Edward Loud is uh, recommended for that post uh, under Board of Registrars for a three-year term to expire 2018. Uh, Alice Hooper uh, for the Council of Arts, two-year term to expire 2017. Sarah Brook, uh, Marguerite Eli, Elia, uh, and da uh, Diane uh, Gambardano, and then also Linda Malloy. Uh, for fence viewers, uh, one-year terms to expire June 30, 2016. Uh, Paula Looney and John Spaulding. Uh, and then Town Council, one year term to expire June 30, 2016. Uh, Deutsch, Williams, Brooks, Dorensis, and Holland. So this would be for the board to consider at your meeting on the 11th. Uh, then also, uh, board to uh, consider, these are. Um, Jeff, on the, I'm just interrupted on oh. the second page. Oh, I'm sorry. The constables, just on yep. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, then under the constables, uh, one-year terms to expire 2016. Uh, there are uh, a number of individuals, uh, Paul Bruce Jr., Alan Hunter, <coughs> uh, Charles Rooney Jr., John Bridges Jr., uh, Ronald DiGregorio, uh, William A. Uh, Pepicelli, uh, John Rowan, and Anthony Saya. Uh, also, Ellen Davis Sawyer, uh, only in conjunction with duties as the animal control officer. Uh, these uh, next appointments are individuals uh, that uh, I would be looking to uh, appoint with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, first of all, I would just note that under the Commission on Disabilities, we do have a vacancy there, uh, and just to make it uh, for public information, uh, we are looking for an individual to serve on that commission. Uh, there, the uh, qualification there or requirement is that we uh, have individuals, or at least in this case, an individual uh, who has a uh, handicap or a, a disability. Uh, also under the historical commission, a three-year term to expire in 2018, uh, two individuals, Kathleen Black Reynolds uh, and Diane Harvey, uh, we also have uh, a post on the Historical Commission on expired term uh, 2017. We do have a vacancy there, so again, I'm looking for uh, someone to serve in that role. Uh, so if anybody has any suggestions there, I'm also uh, going to be uh, posting it on the, uh, the town's website, and we'll be looking to uh, try to take some other measures to identify interested individuals. Uh, permanent Building Committee, three-year term to expire 2018, Diane Allen and Paul Milani. Uh, then under correspondence, uh, there are a couple of letters here expressing interest in uh, continuing to serve as constables, one being from Paul Bruce, Jr. 
Uh, he writes, I would like to personally thank your office, along with the Board of Selectmen, for allowing me to serve as constable uh, from the town of Wilmington. I'm formally requesting that the Board of Selectmen renew my constable license for 2015-16 year. Thank you in advance for your time and consideration. Uh, next is a letter from uh, Ronald De Gregorio. He writes, uh, Dear Board of Selectmen, please uh, reappoint me as a constable of Wilmington. I have been a constable in Wilmington since 1992 and would appreciate the approval uh, of this reappointment. I retired as a Superior Court officer for Middlesex Superior Court after 28 years. I still live at 11 Marriott Road, Burlington, Mass, and have uh, for 42 years. I will abide by your request to not solicit clients in Wilmington, but have authority to serve civil process for my clients. I am still a constable for Woburn, uh, Medford, Somerville, and Cambridge, as well as Wilmington, and have an active bond for each city and town. My bond is good until August 2016 for Wilmington, at which time I, it will be renewed and I will send it to the clerk's office to be filed. I've also completed a training program on the conflict of interest law. Thank you for your consideration uh, on this reappointment. Okay, moving on to board to consider, please. Under board to consider, we have a request uh, to use the gazebo. This request comes from uh, Eva and Greg Luch, uh, and they indicate that their daughter, uh, Catherine Luch, and fiance, Jonathan Witten, uh, are planning to get married on June 13th, uh, and they're wondering if the gazebo at Rotary Park uh, would be available uh, for one to two hours around 5 p.m. on the 13th of June uh, for the ceremony, and then they go on to uh, indicate it will be a, a Justice of the Peace ceremony. Uh, uh, would take approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, the bridal party consists of about 65 uh, guests, uh, uh, and they're also looking to um, set up chairs there. Um, the uh, the constraint or potential conflict uh, is, uh, is uh, as I understand it, uh, the. Uh, Little League uh, playoffs are, are going to be occurring at that point. Um, we did make an inquiry uh, with uh, Rick Hill. Uh, the person that does the scheduling wasn't available uh, as of last week, uh, but he was going to follow up. Uh, he indicates uh, uh, that uh, the Little League scheduler, um, uh, see, for the email to the Little League scheduler, um, and uh, at this point, I have every reason to believe uh, we'll have games going on at 5 p.m. on June 13th, uh, where it's playoffs. There could be a good number of people at the field. Uh, so obviously, my concern is if there's Little League going on, uh, the parking and so on is going to be a bit of a challenge. So, uh, you know, I, I, I guess my thought would be if the board uh, wants to uh, uh, authorize this subject to any uh, conflict that might exist as a result of the uh, uh, Little League, so that essentially if Little League does have games at that time, then we would have to uh, advise uh, these uh, individuals that uh, that date would not be appropriate. If it turns out that uh, there are no games going on at that time, then th then there's no other reason that, uh, you know, that they would be denied. Was the gazebo on the common? If I may, Madam Chair, sure. recommend it, or they mention that maybe at all? They haven't mentioned that, and I don't know. Um, I mean, we can certainly, uh, if the board is so inclined, uh, I can certainly offer that as an alternative. Uh, but they seem to be specific to the uh, gazebo at uh, Rotary Park. It obviously, be easier for them right there if they go into the friendship lodge after. That's. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. My question: I, I definitely validate your concern about the parking. Does the Friendship Lodge afford them ample parking that they could use that parking lot versus some of the public spaces? Do they have parking there that's adjacent to our uh, public buildings? Is there? Yeah, there is, there is certainly parking uh, in that uh, location. I don't know offhand how many. I mean, as a practical matter, they could. Uh, you know, park over uh, next to the public buildings area. Um, I mean, that's certainly uh, something we can, you know, if there's adequate spaces over there, uh, they could certainly park over there as well. Mm 
and you know we could just indicate to them that that would ha be where they would have to park BYOC they could carry their own chairs as they go on walk walk. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean I'm certainly supportive of Little League and don't want to you know undermine their playoff efforts I'll probably be at the field watching a game but um, you know obviously if we can try and marry the two and obviously yeah. solve the parking <laughs> issue excuse the pun um, it would be you know obviously I'd like to see this couple have the opportunity to get married but sure. but obviously I defer to you you know as the manager but I just wanted to bring up yeah, the alternative parking yep. area that might be dedicated to the friendship lodge and it might even be better for them to park there if we specify yeah I would uh, uh, I would have to check and just confirm the number of spaces available but if there is adequate parking I don't see any reason why that couldn't happen if, okay. if they were directed to just park in that specific location uh, because I I would expect that the all the parking in front of uh, uh, Rotary Park will be taken, taken if there's right. uh, baseball games going Definitely. on. Definitely. All right. So, so how do you want us to proceed? Um, you know, grant uh, the request subject to. I would say yes, subject mm -hmm. to uh, space being available at the. Um, uh, at the Friendship Lodge or I in the alternative if um, there is no game uh, or games being played at that time. Okay. So in the absence of those. What, what, if, um, what if we offer a motion that was just uh, subject to any conditions regarding um, parking, or uh, subject to parking in or any other conditions satisfactory to the manager and public safety uh, police chief? Uh, that way, if we're general enough, yeah. we can kind of let you guys just go, go do it. That's. I think that's fine. Okay. Would you like to make All right, a motion? Sure. I move to uh, grant the request uh, that's been presented, subject to such uh, conditions as are satisfactory to the town manager. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Just briefly. Just I, it would, I don't need to add to the motion, but from my perspective, and I think maybe I heard you guys say the same thing. I'd want to prioritize that the parking for the Little League folks, that should be the first priority over, over right. the wedding folks, right? It's not yes. just a matter of how much, but that we want to make sure that they're taken care of and then anything else is bonus. That's so, understood, yeah. Very well. Yeah, thank you. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have uh, next under uh, board to consider uh, a request to uh, extend the agreement with the audit firm uh, uh, audit firm Roselli Clark and Associates uh, they are the auditors of the town's uh, books and uh, the original uh, uh, they were they were hired uh, back in 2012 uh, there was um, a solicitation of quotes done at the time uh, and uh, they had a three-year contract with an option for two additional years uh, and their uh, option year uh, for, for uh, 15 is uh, at a price of 34,000 this past year for auditing our books for 2014 it was 33,000 uh, I would uh, recommend that the board uh, approve the uh, extension uh, for uh, the two-year term I think there have been uh, you know they're certified they are familiar with municipal auditing there are uh, several firms out there obviously that do this uh, their price has certainly been very competitive and I think the results uh, have uh, you know uh, been satisfactory uh, to the rating agencies and uh, meet our requirements uh, I have asked uh, uh, the town accountant Mike Morris uh, to attend this evening in the event there are any particular questions you may have about uh, the audit or the uh, scope of services so to speak uh, and, but I would recommend extension okay any questions or comments from anyone on the board I, I do want to thank you mr. Morris for being here tonight uh, to be with us does anyone have any questions or comments or want to make a motion to grant the extension I I accept and uh, uh, I accept the recommendation of both mr. Morris and mr. Hull I have no questions specifically I don't know if mr. Morris you had something specifically you wanted to offer at this time or, or 
know that we've been very satisfied with their work. They're very conscientious. They do a good job. They issue all reports in a timely manner. They're very accurate. Um, and as Jeff mentioned, their costs are quite a bit cheaper than what we're seeing in a lot of other communities. Thank you. With that said, I would move to uh, accept the recommendation and approve the two-year extension to the contract with uh, Roselli Clark and Associates. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, also on the board to consider, uh, we have a request from uh, Terry Marciello, Director of Elderly Services, to use the Swain uh, Green on uh, Thursday, uh, June 25th, uh, for the Splash into Summer kickoff event, uh, and then on Thursdays, uh, July 9, 16, 23, and 30, uh, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. for their yoga on the green series. Uh, the um, the only concern uh, that uh, we have there is uh, just that the, if you'll recall, the concerts on the Common are scheduled for Wednesdays uh, and the rain date is Thursdays. So I know Terry and uh, uh, Debbie spoke and the plan would be if it turns out there is a concert on the common uh, rain event for Wednesday and they have to use the Thursday as the, the rain date, uh, that uh, Terry's program would be taken indoors. So that would avoid any potential conflict. Other than that, I see no problem. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to grant the request as read by the manager? So moved. Which has been made. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to the end of the board to consider items, moving into public comments. Uh, George Williams, yes. 11 Concord Street. Yes. I'd like to make a, uh, actually, sort of, I guess ask a couple of questions and then make a comment or make a comment first and ask a couple of questions in regard to that package I handed out a few weeks ago. Can I, can I do that? Sure. Okay, um, I guess I'll make the comment first. As part of that process, uh, one of the things I contemplated doing was to bring some of my concerns to the Wilmington Board of Appeals. And I wanted to just point out publicly, I already made some comments to, to uh, uh, the, the building inspector, but I don't think it really went anywhere, that the, the forms that Wilmington has to, to, uh, to bring something to the attention of the, to the Board of Appeals indicates that you have to be the property owner of the, of the issue that's being brought forward. And that's actually not the case. Uh, any aggrieved party can bring a complaint forward to, to the Board of Appeals. And so I just make as a comment that I, I believe that the, the current form that Wilmington is using to bring uh, an issue before the Board of Appeals is in error according to the state law that any, anyone could bring forward a complaint. That was one of the options that I could have done to the, to the structure that I object to at the next property. So I just wanted to add that as a comment. Uh, following up on that, I didn't really, that package information they gave was just a copy of a, about a year and a half of correspondence and photographs. I didn't write a new letter. Most everything, uh, copies of the emails, pretty much explain what was going on. And I was curious if, if anybody has any comments at all that a, a building permit was issued for a structure, uh, or it was, it was issued for a change in a pitch of a roof, and then a whole new structure was being built. And so the permit that was issued had absolutely nothing to do with, the, with activity going on. And it took me three months with videos, multiple complaints and getting Jeff Hall involved before the building inspector took any kind of action and then the action that was taken was to issue a permit that ultimately when I went to the uh, uh, the Massachusetts Building uh, uh, Appeals Board or Code Review Board or whatever it was found that I was right that the, 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 that the you know, there should have been a plan issued and the engineer just determined that what was constructed was totally not up to snuff uh, structurally and uh, I'm still of the position that it doesn't meet code. And I'm, uh, I, I, my opinion is that during that process, which was a sworn testimony at that April 4th hearing, I believe that the, the building inspector made false statements. That's my opinion. Uh, so I'm, I'm not saying that that's true, but that's my opinion. Uh, and then uh, moving forward, uh, when I did have a, a, an attorney send a preliminary letter to the town, which you had a copy of, the response to that, in my opinion, also included a lot of false statements that the, that were just reiterated and repeated by the town council and as an officer of the court I don't think that the town council was allowed to repeat things that aren't true or it, uh, state things that aren't true if, if not if they aren't true you know and, and again it's subject to if I'm right and, and uh, you know or I'm wrong but to this point 
in the process, permits have been issued and the building appeals board or the building review uh, board, whatever, found that I was right. And I'm just curious, uh, uh, you know, similarly to uh, one of Mr. Uh, Selectman Newhouse's pet peeves about that 20 Cocker Street property that he always complained at me about wasting the town's money to look at when an issue, uh, when a permit was issued for a residential house and they actually built a commercial foundation in that instance and it went forward that it was proved that I was right, it was commercial, but the town just didn't do anything. So moving forward, you know, separate from what I may or may not do legally, does the town have any comment as to the process by which, on at least two occasions that I've documented, because it's right in my view, that the, that, that people sign uh, building permit applications and they falsify those applications. The town doesn't appear to take any action against those people that fill out those permits. Does, it, does anybody have any comment moving forward how you might want to clean up that process? Or am I just whistling in the wind here and we'll all see everybody in court in a few months? Thank you for your comments. I'm going to ask the manager if he'd like to respond, and then I'm going to ask Slugman Newhouse if he wants a right of personal privilege to respond. I, I, I don't have any response. I think, um, you know, this. if, if there's an issue that uh, uh, Mr. Lingenfelter feels aggrieved uh, about to the point that he needs to take certain actions, then certainly we'll respond accordingly, but uh, I know this has been a long-standing issue and, you know, I, I don't have any particular response. Okay. Anything? No, I, I think the property that Mr. Lingenfelter is referring to is something that I represented a property owner before I first ran for selectman in 1996, so I, um, there's not much I can say at this point. I will okay. try to take a shot, Mike, if you look at the comment. It just was in reference to the, the process by <coughs> that kind of thing happens in the town and it has happened. I don't know for a fact that it has happened other places. I assume that it has, but it's not really, it's not my concern. It's not really under, under my my direct control, you know, but uh, but there are other things that, that are, you know, probably going to happen that, you know, it also appears to me uh, in instances right, right around my house in my vicinity that the, uh, and I made complaints to the DEP about it, which may get followed up on Wilmington not complying with the weapons uh, process, where, they, where if a homeowner goes to build a deck and you're going to put in a, a solitude, the Conservation Commission makes you put up hay bales and silt fences and everything, but if you're a, apparently a commercial person uh, and you don't get any permission, you just pull in there with trucks and you dump 10 wheel loads of fill in the, in the boring wetlands or the wetlands and you cut down, uh, you know, 100 foot trees, uh, and that's, you know, documented in videos and photographs, and there's no response from the town when I, when I submit this information, and there's no follow-up uh, on multiple occasions. And I just, I'm really kind of at a loss. Like, I know we're, we, we're at loggerheads over other issues, and I know I'm not a popular person, you know, and this is this is personal to me, these issues are bringing up. But it's not just my issue. This is a town, a town problem where this permitting process is not being complied with. It, it, it also, my, final comment, it appears to me as though there's real estate tax fraud going on because the, the, uh, these activities I'm gonna, are, ex are ex I'm going to interject you know, only because you know I want to give you an opportunity to speak I appreciate and, that. but a lot of the personnel that you've talked about are don't have the benefit of being in this room so I'm you know, happy I, to talk to you know I, I'm, I'm just saying that you know before we go on and you know allege you know real estate you're making a lot of assertions and I'm not you know I'm not going to debate those points with you, but we don't have the appropriate people in the room to assist with answering some of those direct questions. I mean, to make comments that town council is making false statements, to make comments that repeating, repeating false yeah. statements um, as, you know, j just some of the statements that you're making, you know. It but I've given copies in writing, so I'm not, I'm not just making a wild, I, I'm not saying I understand you are, that. Yeah. But you know, in fairness to the other parties, they're not here to, to voice their respective department's response. So, um, you know, the manager doesn't have uh, much to offer in the way of a comment. Uh, obviously, you know, you have personal choices to make as to how you want to well, proceed. That's where we're going. And, and so my comment wasn't really specifically looking for an answer. It was to put these out, to just ask for comment. And you don't want to give me, then that, that, that tells me where we're at, that uh, I'm sure other people have similar uh, concerns and, and instances. and. Well, I think once so, you talk legal matters, you know, I say this respectfully, we, we have attorneys as well, and once you bring up a legal matter, you know, we're going to defer to our counsel before making any public comments. 
All right. I, I guess my just general comment is that, you know, unfortunately, for, for any number of reasons, I guess it, it appears that anything the town does is not right in Mr. Lingenfelter's eyes. So, you know, we could be, it, it doesn't, it's not productive to try to engage in any kind of a conversation because apparently we're, we're, we're not a particularly, um, I guess we don't know what we're doing and anything we do is wrong. So, I, you know, how do, how do you respond to that? But a specific example, though. Here's the permit. Here's the structure that doesn't have nothing to do with it. The person signs the thing, I testify this is what it is. And there's no follow up repercussions to those people. Make, and if, I, I give it, it's in writing, you have a copy of it. And that's, I'm wrong because it's wrong and it's in writing and the, and the, and the building code review people agree with me. Okay. Well, I'm not going to debate the legal issues, uh, Mr. Lingenfelter. Uh, you know, if um, I, we'll just have to. You know, you you, you okay. have to do what you I need to do. To know that. And I, want, I want it to be public, though. If I solve my problem, I want other people to know about it because I think this is not, I'm not, I don't think I'm an isolated case. And the town does do a lot of things right. But specifically, several things are wrong, and I'm trying to point them out moving forward that maybe you can correct them. But no one wants to talk back, no one wants to have me back and forth. The only letter you sent me said that uh, I'm expressing animus, but I think the animus is against me because I'm pointing out specific examples of what's wrong. And so far, I've been proven correct through the regulatory well, I, process. I, I would just say I'm not clear that that's accurate, but I'm not going to get into that debate. OK. I'm, I'm At this thank point, you. Thank you. Anyone else want to make a public comment? OK, hearing none. Um, new business and committee reports. I will start to my right, please. No. Um, I just wanted to point out the correspondence that was in our package um, and we didn't include it on uh, the agenda but I thought it was worthy of making a uh, public comment about uh, John Donahue who happens to be a Wilmington resident and member of the high school building committee uh, and also works um, for the uh, Massachusetts Convention Center Authority uh, had made arrangements for us to uh, uh, enjoy the uh, a gift of a uh, particular aerial lift that's going to be helpful to us in terms of uh, maintenance at the new high school. So mm -hmm. I just thought it was worth uh, publicly acknowledging uh, Mr. Donahue and we appreciate his uh, efforts on behalf of the town. Thank you. Anything, Mr. Simonville? I got nothing. Okay. Moving on to my left. Good Chair. Thank you. Okay. I was going to say in the last phase, I. I have tremendous amount of faith in the work that town manager Jeff Hall does uh, every day in his office and all of the department heads uh, that that, uh, he, that report to him, um, as well as our town council. And so, you know, I think uh, we were being potential, not, we were being baited or, or being asked for a quote unquote comment. And that's my comment on, on your, your, your request for comment is, uh, you know, I, I look to the, the management of the town, I look to the town council. Uh, and I'm satisfied with the response that I'm getting from them. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I, I guess I want to take this just brief opportunity to um, thank the people of Wilmington for coming out on Saturday on Election Day. I think it was a reasonably uh, good day in terms of vote count. I want to congratulate uh, Rob Peterson on, uh, on his uh, being elected to the town moderator position. Uh, I want to thank all the poll workers for all the hard work that they did. It was a, a, it's always a long day for them, uh, and they did a great job. Um, and certainly, I, uh, I want to say that I'm, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to work with you, uh, my colleagues here, for another three years. So uh, thank you for all that. And lastly, Town Manager Jeff Hall is going to give us important dates in a few moments. But I just want to take the opportunity, if I can, to encourage people from throughout the town to carve out a few hours for next Saturday. It's town meeting. It's the purest form of democracy. It's government by the people. So um, I, I really hope that we can get a, as good a turnout uh, next Saturday, uh, percentage-wise, as we did for um, for the election, and get people out to participate in this local government process. So, thank you, Madam Chair. If I could say, yes. I want to congratulate you on your re-election. I know you had a tough election, <laughs> and uh, you know, I know you were sweating bullets. Yeah, it was a hot day. Thanks. <laughs> thank I think you. the description that was used was trouncing. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think that was what the adjective was. Word. I don't know. I, it wasn't my word, and I didn't say it, but I. Um, so I um, wanted to just give a quick uh, committee report. I, I will be brief because obviously you uh, indicated town meeting, and there's there's a host of um, various Warren articles that are going to be there, and so I don't want to 
come across as a special interest, but that's exactly what I'm doing in the sense of being the chair for the Untitled Development Committee. I just want to let uh, the board know that we had our public uh, last public forum on April 15th, and we gave a, a presentation to the community, which was more of an information session. Uh, we had Green International and their affiliates there to give a very detailed presentation to the community, and then we opened it up for questions and answers so that people, regardless of whether or not they deem this project appropriate to be funded, uh, they at least had a public forum right before town meeting to get the latest information hot off the presses to see the 3D renderings, which um, in my opinion, we got a lot of favorable feedback. So uh, we do have a few warrant articles that are going to be coming uh, before town meeting. Uh, we're obviously asking for a substantial contribution towards the project. Um, in my opinion, I think that it's been a very open and transparent process. And I certainly could not um, say enough about the all the departments, we pretty much have everybody have, has a seat at the table. And also we have several well-intended volunteers throughout the community that are on the committee. So it's been a two-year journey and we still have a long way to go. Um, but I certainly appreciate the support of this board uh, for that project and hopefully we'll reach the next milestone in getting the funding. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to publicly reiterate uh, the funding for Nine Cross Street will be front and center at town meeting and I'm hoping that my colleagues will assist me in getting a uh, favorable vote for that appropriation. So thank you. Moving on to important dates. Uh, Madam Chair, just before I get to that, if I could just uh, make one comment and this has to do with the our yard waste collection uh, process that is ongoing as I suspect many residents are only too um, uh, aware of uh, the collection has uh, fallen behind a lot of the uh, leaf bags uh, remain out at the curb uh, Mike uh, Woods the Public Works Director uh, has been dealing with uh, Northside Cartage they are the vendor uh, that we contract with for the collection of our solid waste and they also as part of the uh, contract are required to collect the yard waste uh, th they're uh, whether it's coincidence or otherwise, are uh, uh, nearing the end of their contract. Uh, and it's been a struggle, quite honestly, the last few weeks trying to get them to uh, stay on time and on target. Uh, it continues to be uh, the expectation is that uh, if we're not able to get them to uh, collect the uh, material uh, by or before the end of the week, then we're going to be using town forces to uh, make the collection and then we will look at our options in terms of dealing with uh, north side but i do want to make residents aware that uh, we understand that your uh, yard waste has not been uh, picked up in the uh, timely manner that it should have been and we will uh, address that yes there's this, this supposed to be one more pickup do you think that we're going to cancel that or we're going to try to follow through with that uh, the pickup in may we will, uh, that's something I'm going to have to talk to uh, Mike Woods about how we'll handle that. But, um, yeah, let, let, let me, let me look at that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. On to important dates, please. Important dates. Uh, we have the uh, brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on April 29th. April 30th is a welcome to Wilmington new residence reception at the Memorial Library, 6.30 p.m. Uh, May 2nd is the annual town meeting at the high school auditorium beginning at 1030. Uh, also, uh, May 2nd is a, another brush drop-off date, Old Main Street, uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, during, uh, uh, it, th at this point anyways, it is, uh, we're looking at another curbside collection of yard waste from May 8th, uh, May 4th to May 8th, uh, subject to our ability to do that uh, collection. Uh, brush drop off again, Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, May 8th is the Good Guy Award dinner. May 9th is another brush drop off, Old Main Street, 9 a.m. To, to 4 p.m. Uh, May 9th is the Household Hazardous Waste uh, Day collection over at the West Intermediate School, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the next selectman's meeting is on uh, May 11th here at 7 p.m. And then uh, May 12th is the next uh, Yentile Farm Development Committee meeting uh, here at uh, Town Hall Room 9, 6 p.m. Can I ask a 
question on May 11th, uh, Board of meeting you wrote auditorium. Is that a mistake or is there a reason for that? Uh, no, there is the, uh, the, the, the reason for that is that we will be honoring the cheerleaders uh, that uh, received an award for their uh, efforts, uh, I believe, in Florida. That was down in Florida. They had, were entered into a competition, so in light of the expected crowd, we'll be meeting in the auditorium. And Excellent. It was a surprise, Mike, so thanks for oh, I just <laughs> kept out of the bag. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, so brings us to the end of the agenda. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? Okay. Motion's been made. Second. We have a second? second. All those in favor? Yeah. Yes. Good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>